So, where are you at now, and what do you want to do? What else do you want to do? Well, see if you can't figure out what's wrong with it. Okay, well, if this is your configuration currently, the things you've got to look at, you got to look here. Now, you see, unless I'm reading it wrong, this one reads master here? Yeah. Now, unless the drive is of the type that it allows you to have that in that position, what this re what this means, what this requires, is a slave. So that when you have this in master, it requires a slave. If you don't have a slave, it goes very slow because it has to time out at 45 seconds for each device. So that may be the reason why you're booting up slowly. Have a look at the top of this and you'll see Can you it's out. it'll slide out, yeah. It slides out toward upwards. Just oh. like that. Yeah. Have a look here. Where is this? You can just see it. I can't quite read it. Single is no jumper. Master is the middle like you have. And slave... Oh, I'm sorry, cable select is the next one over. Can you see it over here? I have to take it off to get to it. But it's this location right here. Ah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Actually, so I have not touched that. That's okay. Yeah, but that's the, the way it was set up. And, and that's fine. You can have it any way you like. But be aware that these are important as you know, but the significance of it is when it's in master, it waits 45 seconds for each controller to uh, time out. So when you boot up and you only have one item connected, then you'll have a delay for each one. If you have cable select, if you remove this jumper, down here, looks like. Then, um, you know what's over here? Kill us, Mike? Yeah. Uh, then, the master and the slave are determined by cable location. That's what it means by cable select. So if you have it on cable select, <coughs> this one's a secondary, this one's a primary. Not super critical, but yeah, right. That's what we. That's what you were showing me. I guess I. Well, anyway. Yeah. Okay, we get but that. That is overridden when by you this right as the controller. Okay. As by cable control. select, that removes the the selection of the master slave <coughs> and diverts it either to software or typically the chipset on the board. The chipset on the board, you got to know. So. Again, let's review the let's review this real fast. You know where the processor is. That's obvious, huh? Yes. Okay. You know where the memory is. That's right. Now, the chipset in this case is located right here. You can see that. This one happens to be Intel. All right. Okay. Uh, I can't read the actual numbers, but. Looks like FW8, mm, 3, 2, 7, uh, whatever it is. If you needed the um, drivers for that, that's what you would look up. And it's called a chipset. Okay. The chipset controls pretty much everything on the system board. It, it's kind of like a traffic cop, if you will. It's a lookup table, traffic cop, manipulator. It, sh it, it shunts between different things on the board. <coughs> it essentially... The, the really important parts of it are to provide a lookup between this and the BIOS, wherever the BIOS is. Oh, I'm not seeing the BIOS chip here. That might be it here, I'm not sure. I don't see the BIOS chip. It's obviously not socketed. So it provides a lookup between the BIOS chip and the processor. It provides a lookup between any other specialty chips. So on this board, you have a Yamaha sound chip. Uh, you got an SMSC. Oh, that's the BIOS, I guess. Which would be the BIOS? This one here? This right here. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the BIOS right there. Okay. And then you got an Intel, some sort of, maybe that's a UART or something, I'm not sure. Be nice to have the manual and then you know. 
Oh, that could be the USB uh, uh, chip. Which one? This one here, perhaps. Okay. I'm guessing. I'm truly guessing. Okay. Uh, but this one I know is a sound chip. <coughs> That's the multimedia sound chip. So that provides the integrated sound. Mm hmm So, as I mentioned, there are multiple buses here. In the PC world, they have specific names. But there's a, a memory bus, a video bus, and an I.O. bus. On this layout, this one down here is the, uh, they call it uh, side bus, uh, or front side bus, rather, uh, FSB. This is the AGP slot, and this is the primary video. But it, on the PC world, it's called AGP. And this one here is the PCI or I.O. slot. Will I be able to install this Ethernet device? Sure. Yeah, you want to install and, it? And download drivers for it and what have you? Actually, uh, what is it? Windows XP might already have them in them. Yeah, odds are Windows XP will already see it. Yeah. Let's, let's, the, uh, yeah, let's get you booted up. Yeah, let's, uh, okay. Yeah. So, what you want to do is simplify, simplify, simplify. So, let's take out your, oh, I want to take out your, um, your, uh, A drive, your AB drive, which is copy or, you know, the primary drives for the non hard drive. And if you look closely, your short screen here will show you primary IDE and secondary IDE. Okay, so PRI, IDE, and that's this one. And then you got secondary, and that's this one. Okay. So what we want to do is, we're going to boot up alone for right now, because it's simplified. So I'm going to take this off completely. All right. Take that off completely because you want to simplify? So because I want to have a single boot up. Okay, so I'm going to have a single boot up. And when you take that off, that does what? Um, per the configuration on this controller, this is the controller, this board right here. Uh -huh. Per that configuration, which is labeled up here, right? Uh, no jumpers indicates single. Single meaning one standalone. Okay. And we'll do that. that that's in a uh, universal? No. No? Nope. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad it isn't standard. Otherwise, it'd be too simple. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's why you know, when people say, well, the jumper's here, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, it's well, hard to say. Yeah. And unfortunately, it even varies within the manufacturer. Okay. You know? All right. So it's so annoying. All right. Oh, within the manufacturer. Well, that's good too. That's even worse. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. So well, I'm glad listen. to hear that it's all organized so nicely for yeah, us. Right. Our audience out on Google Video and YouTube is going to be delighted when they find out about these intricacies. <laughs> yeah. Here. Right. Okay. So the rest of it, we don't care. Now you want to know where the here's the BIOS clear right here. Huh? No BIOS config. Yeah, that's, that's the it? one that I was uh, playing with. And that didn't clear it, huh? Well, you know, okay. with my limited experience, I can only attest to what I've already aforementioned. All right, well, let's have a look and see how it boots up then. <laughs> so you got... Uh, <laughs> so you unplug the flop. I turned off, I, uh, turned off the power, the power switch in the back. Well, this truly is opposite to almost every other computer I know. Well, of course. Normally, normally, the keyboard would be on the bottom, ah. and the mouse is on top. But yeah, well, okay. These are these things are reserved for Chris. Apparently, I need to uh, I need to learn about the special electrical disturbances in I've never in seen the that. known world. I have to God, I've never seen that. What is this for? Uh, that's a USB device that goes to my router, so we don't need it. No, don't need it. Okay, so let's turn us. Uh, are we clear everywhere else? No other funny business going on. So let's turn this on and see what we get here. Where's your... Is this your keyboard? That's the keyboard. Oh, well, that's encouraging. Haven't heard that noise with the hard drive hooked up. 
So let's go here. This is a Phoenix BIOS, because you can tell. Well, it says it here. Uh huh. But I don't wonder what's wrong with this. So it finds the drive, that's good. USB legacy enabled, that's okay. I enabled that, just not knowing exactly what it was, <laughs> thinking that it might be something. Uh, is that the, just a USB device, period, or? Legacy USB? Yeah. Uh, what it means is that it allows you to uh, connect to old USB. Um, so that's the older mouse, the uh, older stuff. USB oh, oh it's a different type of USB. USB devices. Uh, so, let's have a look. What do we got here? You have one memory module? Or yeah, that's the original one. Okay. Yeah, so it, so it took the others it. out. Uh, here, this is the L2 cache. Now, L2 is on your, uh, on your processor. Uh, what this does is um, ECC is um, error correct, cyclic correct, I believe it's called. And... Um, if you had errors, this would allow it to correct on the fly, but it takes a lot of uh, processing time to do that. So we try to turn that off, and if it works, you're happy. Plug and play? Well, you are plug and play, but it's okay. So your serial devices, this is your serial 1, serial 2. Are you using those? Uh, no. Then turn them off. Parallel port, are you using it? Uh, for the printer. Okay. Bidirectional is fine. EPP is extended printer port, and ECP is extended communication port. The distinction here is <coughs> bidirectional means two direction. So that what that's saying to you is it allows communication in both directions, to the printer and from the printer to the computer. And this is important because if you want to have the printer update, or, or actually any device, I'm sorry, but typically it's a printer in this case, um, bidirectional gives you that ability for the printer to update the processor. EPP gives you extended features, so it gives you, oh, whatever the software manufacturer wants to add, some extended features, uh, other than the basic printing function. It can be like low toner, or out of paper, well out of paper would be a printer, but additional features, some flash BIOS, uh, automatic updates, things like that. Okay? ECP allows you to communicate to things other than printers. So it allows you to communicate to say specialty routers or other, other computers um, or um, other controllers. And that communication port gives you that extra ECP these are the extra features. Yeah. Garth, hey, show us how to do all this. No, these are just my uh, my interpretations of this. So, uh, these are audio, which you have on board, and that's the reason that you're seeing this. And by the way, this information is held in BIOS, but this would be an example of something that is interpreted through that chipset. So the BIOS allows you to engage or not engage it, or enable or disable. If you were to disable, that's one less thing the chipset would have to manage. So that's an example. And the USB stuff we talked about. So that's good. IDE. You're familiar with IDE? Let's have a look. This is the time uh, delay. The pre-delay is the time at which the hard drive powers up and comes ready. This is nine seconds that the computer has to wait no matter what. Now, you can change this. You can perhaps disable it. The difficulty of this is that if the hard drive is not ready and your processor is ready, uh, then you get a failure. It just says hard drive dead because it's not ready. Nine seconds is a lot. I would move that down to three. And actually, if once you get your thing tuned up here, you can probably turn that off completely because by the time the, the processor goes through its self-check, and the memory does its thing, the hard drive's up and running. Okay, so now we found an IDE master, and that's as we would expect it, uh, because it's standalone. 
it's in the master location so this is what we would expect uh, floppy options I'm going to turn that off momentarily just because I want to simplify I don't want it right now all right uh, DMI uh, this is direct uh, uh, memory um, you can clear all these things if you have uh, uh, this is a diagnostic tool essentially so it tells you if, if failures occur this is where you would find them in the memory video uh, snooping is a uh, uh, is a method to see if there's other spectrum frequency that's uh, a problem and if it is, uh, it automatically shifts the frequencies. Uh, I keep it disabled, it just it slows the whole thing down. Aperture size, this is uh, considered bandwidth for the video system bus, if you will. So the higher you make this, the more the video can flow. But you obviously want to, well not obvious, but you want to optimize this. Because if you give it too much, then the video will hiccup and hesitate. If you give it too little, the video will feed and fill slowly. So either way is annoying to the user. So you optimize. So if 64 is good, try 256. If you find that the video is hiccuping, put it back down. If you find that it's flowing nicely, you'll find it will, your, your performance will be better. The refresh will be better. Things will happen quicker. Primary video. AGP or PCI, and what this is saying is, do you want to use the direct bus, the direct video bus, which is AGP, or do you have a secondary PCI card? In other words, do you have another card that you want to use for a monitor on the I.O. slot, on the PCI bus? And so, the way that this architecture works, if you have multiple video cards, and you can have many video cards, the question that has to be answered at this point is do you want the processor to check the I.O. or do you want to just use the direct video and ignore everything else? So that if you had a PCI card you would have to say PCI and then it would scan down the I.O. bus first take that as your primary and then it knows that the AGP is a video bus so it would assign the 